Do you know, I started, let's say, my second career in spirituality in the late 60s. I was reading Ramana Maharshi and uh, others. There are lots of other books out there too about self-inquiry. And this was a way to find yourself, become enlightened. Which was to, depending on how it was taught, Robert taught it by saying, follow the I thought, whatever that meant. So for me, that involved the steps of being able to slow the mind down enough to be able to watch thoughts. And after I watched, watched thoughts, became an entertainment. But you can never find yourself by looking for yourself. Self-inquiry is a lost cause because you're employing the self, which is you, to find the self. Okay. That one. Okay. Yeah, I'm going So whenever you seek anything, the self becomes focused on that which you seek whether it be a restaurant to eat dinner at, a roll of toilet paper so you can go to the bathroom, and since you can only see or perceive The phenomenal might say it's the existential world as it appears to us. Or the stuff we feel just by waking up in the morning. Or what we experience when we look inside of ourselves into the emptiness. But when we, what we find is not our sense of self that way. Because you can only be the self. You can't find the self as an object. The self is something you have as your experience when you're not searching and instead just resting in yourself. So when you search for yourself, inwardly or outwardly, whatever you find is in the phenomenal world in consciousness. But it's not you, it's something you perceive. So I found myself as 
endlessly looking into myself, which was looking into the emptiness inside and diving deeper and deeper. I'll tell you some things about finding yourself. Way number one, and the most difficult, because what you're looking for, when you accept that you already are the self, is not some new experience. but just the experience of being alive and being aware of being alive. So, instead of looking, or somebody that says, find this or do that, can't find something you already are. You find something that's a concept to you, like the self or God. So you seek the direct experience of a concept. And that never can be the self. The first way to find the self is not to seek for it, but instead to fall into it. Imagine just relaxing. Relaxing your body. Relax it till you can't relax it anymore. And you're there. When you can relax until you can't relax anymore. You're at a place where even all the muscles in your body are loose and not stressed at all. But you're aware of being awake and being alive. And there's a kind of resting in that. The state of not thinking not searching, just being aware of yourself, being aware of your chest and your gut and the feeling of what it is just to be alive. You don't have to look anywhere for it. You feel for it. It's your basic state, the same one you wake up to in the morning before thoughts come, the gap. And in this, everything arises from it. You feel very still. You feel very quiet. There's no muscle tension in you anywhere. There's a kind of necessary tension which you hardly feel of keeping your head straight and up instead of slumped over. Same with sitting. It's not stressful, it doesn't strain you. 
it feels perfectly well balanced. I call this feeling of feeling your inward life force. Beingness. Your sense of existence. The basic feeling of being alive and being awake. with mind pointed nowhere in particular. Just relaxing and feeling yourself. Unmoved to do anything. No need to go anywhere. No need to deal with the thoughts that come up, just ignore them. No need to pay any attention to all the tasks your mind says you, you have to complete today and tomorrow. Because your mind now is really just in being yourself. It's a kind of magical state of total awareness of your being alive and of your body. With the absence of thoughts talking to you all the time. Yeah, it's a kind of silence, but to say that you have to seek silence is still seeking something. You already are this silence. All that you have to do is shut up for a while and feel your silence. But you know, it's hard to do that when your whole life consists of finding answers to problems. Just relax into yourself. The feeling of your chest, the feeling of your gut, the feeling of light all around you. And if you close your eyes, you still see light. And if your body's relaxed enough, you can perceive the depths of yourself. But to put it in words, what you feel is kind of misleading. There's probably no real world word for that experience of being alive and being aware. on a feeling basis. It's very light. Your body's very light and highly sensitive. And there are no thoughts. You're just balanced in this state of being quietly aware of being alive and how good that feels. It has no color, no location, it's everywhere, but it seems to originate from your core, a line from the top of your chest down into your gut which disappears into darkness. Like your basic consciousness arises from the gut and radiates to the rest of your body. 
but you sit in this lit stillness, feeling the life force within. Sometimes you can't separate out different feelings. It's all one. Sometimes you can feel the life force waking up in you. And you can give it, a, it attention because it seems like another, another in you, a ghost in you. Not self, but related to self. This is one way to realize the self. But it's very difficult because it's just surrendering to what you already are, which seems like such a trivial and trite thing to do when you expect self-realization to transport you entirely beyond what you've known. It's learning how to value was extremely ordinary, which is your own consciousness and feeling inside your body. At first you spend a long time teasing this feeling out of everything else that's going on inside of you. Thoughts, muscle tension, tension in your neck, your shoulders. The back of your arms in your mouth, your teeth are clenched a bit. And to find the basic bare minimum feeling requires that all of the other sensations that you have and thought you have are surrendered to that sense of beingness, just being alive, being aware. And you had expected so much more. You had expected to be able to transcend the self. But what you really transcended is your mind and all the distractions it throws at you, including teachings about how to self-realize yourself. However, there is, or there are other methods to discover the self. There's a different aspect of self that you can recognize. By asking yourself,
where is the source of feeling? This focuses your mind and your attention onto the feeling of your body. First on the muscles outside in the skin with the air touching it or clothes touching it or the sofa touching it. Instead of looking inwards for the toucher, just feel inwards for your source. You can do that with hearing too. Who is it that hears? What is it that hears? Where does hearing take place? And you can practice with each of your senses. And eventually, looking down into this unicity, which is the unified self expression and feeling of yourself with no mind, no diversion, and no being distracted. is the barrier, the boundary between their hearer and the self and what is heard. You can get to a place where you feel like you're at the source of hearing. And when you're at the source of hearing, you're at the center of yourself again, once again. The same thing about with thinking too. Finding the source of the, of the thinker comes to that same part of you inside, in your gut, in your heart. Now, the other kinds of self-experiences that you can have like the explosion of Shakti within, which takes you to a place where you don't have to do anything anymore because this Shakti character is guiding you and directing you every moment of the day. Think of it this way. No searching. No, look, no looking for the self because you are the self already. So what does this feel like? You can close your eyes. and just be. If you practice diving into yourself, into that emptiness inside, 
or you listen for the listener, that boundary between listening and listener. When you get deep enough, your attention turns itself around and looks outwards into the world and into itself simultaneously. And you're at rest. This is what it's like to be self-realized is you already are self. So you can't really look for it, but you can definitely feel it. And it's wrong to say feel for it because it makes it sound like you're still seeking it. Instead, you just feel it as it is. Which requires gradually getting rid of all the tension in the body. By repeated sessions of relaxing. And from that place of relaxing, just to feel what you can feel. Which usually is feeling more and more deeply settled into your body. Where there's no movement. You're just being. Relax into yourself. You're already there. Just find out what it's like. It's not something that needs to be searched for because that effort takes you away from being you. So, just be yourself. What that, what that really means for the practitioner is to open yourself up to experiencing yourself and then resting away and surrendering away all of you that distracts from resting into that self. And one of the key things is your mind. And the other key thing is tension in your body. You know, there are a thousand ways to screw with your mind as part of meditations. But the one that I found most valuable was to constantly be aware what the mind is doing when it starts acting up on you and how it sucks you into thinking games, following tangents of thoughts so that you get lost in the mind and concepts and names and maybe secondary emotions generated. But what you want to do is to be able to relax your body to the extent where there's not a muscle moving in tension. The breath, breath flows. You don't need to attend to it. 
just become nothingness. Just a passive receptor for your own life force. And the unfolding of your own life. Just sit there and feel yourself. And you watch the mind try to start up and get your attention to do something. The mind's always trying to get your attention. Right, Veselina? The mind's always trying to get your attention. And you see the way it does it is over and over the same way. It sucks you into a sequence of thinking. You get distracted by one thought, which generates a second thought, which generates a third thought, and you're off to the races. Daydreaming, so to speak, or doing calculations, or thinking about how to strategies. And you see how these distractions rob you from the des desirability of being able to rest in yourself. You see the mind is wasting your time of feeling yourself, of being yourself. And the body too though is defended. All your life you've been suffering from trauma. And these trauma become muscle tensions in you. Ways that you've learned how to tighten your muscles unconsciously. To avoid feeling certain emotions or remembering certain events. These are your defenses against living in the mundane world. But the mundane world is the one you were born into and you lived in until you came here. And I try to show you ways to escape the mundane life, the mundane world, such as through great love and devotion and surrender. If that's the path that takes itself to you, falling in love, falling into surrender, because once you've learned how to surrender to another, you can also surrender all of your thoughts, all of your emotions, and all of your body tensions. It's not easy. You have to do it over and over and over and over again until it's in a sense you've surrendered all of your defenses. To existence. And you can just rest in yourself. As pure sentience. 
aware of the world and also of the deeper layers of feeling within yourself, including love, acceptance, surrender, devotion, But if you have a specific path, at some point, it's going to hold you way back because it's hard to let go of 20 or 30 years of practices. It's hard to let go of that orientation of tension. To just be nothing and do nothing. And in that state of being nothing and doing nothing to feel yourself and what you feel like. As well as see and whatever you see. You'll find too over time that When you rest so deeply, when you open your eyes and see the world, you begin to see things you didn't see before. You begin to feel things you didn't feel before either. You can call it the breath of God within you. The divine, which is a combination of bliss, feeling completed, feeling rest, relaxation, and peace. Can you imagine yourself feeling peace? Nothing but peace. You just feel the entirety of your body. You feel the entirety of your chest, your gut, your arms, your legs, only you feel them from the inside. And the mind does not stir, it embraces the experience of your body and of the life force within the body. And sometimes it feels like the life force is you. And at other times you witness it like another. So which is true. Well, sometimes one way is true. At other times, a different way is true. It doesn't have to stay one way. So you can follow your hearing, if you want, back to the hearer. Which will take you to the same place, but a slightly different experience of it. You will experience it as a boundary between the experiencer and the experience. And that the understanding or the experience happens at this boundary between you and existence. <coughs> and on this side of it is you. 
and the other side is existence. And you can slip back into the other way of perceiving yourself as just being quiet, open, open to everything. Open to feeling your chest, your stomach, your face, your head, any energies you might feel, or down lower into being just alive. And how good that feels if you're not distracted by tension in the body. And you can feel the tension and you know it's blocking you from fully perceiving yourself. <clears throat> and this tension just requires a constant gentle relaxation. It's like feeling the tension in your back and gently caressing it with your mind. So that relaxes. And the more it relaxes, the closer you are to your own ground of being. Grundlagen. your own base of being and just being. Now, you can just be aware of yourself as a human, feeling your body. Or you can be aware of it without thinking, this is so, such and such is so. And when you're this way, you're living ever so gently on yourself. the totality of yourself. The mind stops speaking. And you settle into yourself. You become all of yourself. Resting in yourself. The joy of resting in yourself. Resting in one sense of being.
Raju, what is your experience? I don't know why you picked me, but it, what you said today, the two methods, I keep alternating on both and where I am right now, which is I'm able to feel that one self separate from the attention, separate from the will that is directing the attention to either be with the body or be with the mind or thought or be independent of it. And sometimes the power of the thought can drag me, but I'm able to bring the attention back and just keep it on the beingness and find that gap where the calmness and the, and the stillness uh, is pervading. And that's, that's where I am right now. And, uh, with just as few words as possible. That's where I feel right now. Thank you. Bernadette. Um, um, it just feels very, very pleasant. I'm I'm able to relax more than I used to with the muscle tension and letting go. And uh, and sometimes I can feel that experience or in my center. I don't know what to say. It just feels wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Chris. I have a lot of mind chatter and I really appreciate walking me through what you've just done. It, it gave me moments of unchatter, the quiet, but the mind kept pinging back, but, I, I, but at least I had moments of quiet and peace, but the mind would then come roaring back and I just have to reapply what you're saying. Just take a deep breath, relax, relax. And it would give me, like I said, moments of peace before the mind would pop back in again. I really appreciate if you could post this. I would really like to try it again and again this afternoon and in the coming days. This is very helpful to me. Thank you. Okay. Oh, gee, um, the bliss I felt from today is so deep. Um, I, I feel bliss more in my life every day than I'm almost. I'm almost afraid to to be so joyful in the sense that it just suffuses me so deeply. But I I have a friend in in Melbourne, who was supposed to go to India. Her family is pure Bhaktic. She, she fundraises for 40,000 children in 28 villages uh, near Arunachala, and she broke her foot. And there's starting to be some neurological damage, so she can't go. So I would ask the Sangha to just try to channel love to her because her whole family is love. All they ever do is give, and her name is Aditi. And um, her father founded the, this, uh, he opened the foundation in 1995. And I, I would be there, that is my joy, to circumambulate the mountain and be at her feet. So I love you all, and if you would share love, channel love I would that would be my joy and my grace but edgy the bliss that you've the channel through me today is more exquisite than I could have ever imagined and you do it every time so I love you all and I love the the love that is requited to me in every moment thank you I love you Jay uh, Aditi means the mother of the universe so 
she that her her father's mother was the inspiration for the Chinmayananda World um, Spiritual Foundation. The whole family is steeped in in pure bhakta. I mean, I, not I. I don't mean to belabor it, but Raju, yes, thank you for that because because. Um, because you know where from I'm speaking, because the more than anything in this world, I want to be, you know, Diwali, uh, Tiruvannamali, Ramanashram, and Arunachala. That's my love and my joy and, my, and the abiding grace and God's love and God manifest, I shall be there. I love you all and thank you, Raju. Mm -hmm. Rekha, what about your experience, Rekha? I don't want to speak about if it is recorded. Okay. You hear me? Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, so you brought me back to the beginning of everything. That's all what I can say. And uh, there aren't any words here. And I don't want to move from here. Selena. Hi. What am What am I supposed to say? Tell us what your experience is. Well. You, I, well, I, I don't feel well. I feel horrible today. So, you, the satsang, uh, help, helped me to relax a little bit. But overall, I am very angry. I have hate and feelings like that in me. And yeah, that's it. Are you willing to talk about it? Well, okay. But it's, no, it's too difficult for me. I cannot share because, so today, okay. maybe next time. Okay. Frank. Good morning, everyone. I began, <clears throat> I began satsang very, very tired this morning. And I feel more awake now. What I, what you're talking about is what I understand is the living as the awareness of awareness. It's a open, timeless, spacious presence where there is peace and thoughts are present, but are just kind of like clouds passing in the sky. Um, it's a very familiar place for me. Um, what isn't familiar? Now, let me restate that. The tension that you speak of is not particularly bodily tension for me. It is the tension of a concept that um, my experience of being fully awakened is supposed to be different than it is. 
and though I, I see it for what it is cognitively, it, I know it still creeps in and is probably the greatest impediment uh, to my experience right now, or shall I say it's the greatest content to my experience. Um, one of the reasons why I come here is because, um, of course, I'm reminded again and again and again that, of the nonsense that that is. So thank you for this morning. What is your experience right now? Right now, I feel very peaceful very quiet inside. I can watch the words that I say. Sometimes I actually am capable of seeing the, the thoughts as they appear and seeing the thoughts as they, well, as soon as I see them, they just kind of disappear. There, there is a, um, a voice, I suppose, though it isn't quite a voice, but there's a, a feeling of when am I going to stop doing this to myself? And, um, I, I, little Frank, doesn't seem to know how to take that one completely free. And so I keep surrendering as best I can. And for me, surrender is to go back into that place of spacious awareness, of a quiet, uh, almost remote witnessing of all experience. And that seems to be what is the clearest way for me to live right now. But I must admit, I do, I do miss that joyfulness. There's happiness. That joyfulness, that bliss that Jay has talked about and you have spoken about, I don't know that. And I think that in my mind, it is wanting that or the missing of that that keeps grasping at me and I keep grasping onto. He experienced a shock, the opening. I have? No, I'm just saying. Oh. To experience a shock, the opening usually requires intense emotions, intense feelings of surrender. Intense love. And this intensity, for example, being able to love yourself or to someone else, it's very cathartic. And can lead up to the experience of God within as that devotion increases inside. But how you get the devotion increases more or less up to you. You can picture some ideal object that you have, we've read about or you've seen or you've heard of. And just feel that feeling as strongly as possible. Think of the person that you love most in your life and the feeling you have towards that person and let it magnify itself and become a flame 
so that you can truly understand that chant. Kindle my heart's flame with thy flame, O Lord. Kindle my heart's flame with thine, O Lord of yoga, Lord of the universe. Kindle my heart's flame with thine. You can practice what you've had experienced in the past. Deep loves or one you love now. And just focus on that feeling. The intensity of the feeling. I was fortunate it came along and took me. The devotion took me. The sense of surrender took me. I didn't have to develop it. It was there. But how do you get there? It's something you highly desire. to want that. And eventually just that wanting that will make it happen. But that big explosion of Shakti, if it's big enough, it never leaves. And you're living in a divine world where everything is different. It's hard to say exactly how it's different. But you're not seeking so much anymore as much as well as much as unfolding. You've recognized the life force in you as God. The feeling doesn't go away. It's there most of the times when you look for it. And then when you're quiet, they feel it even stronger. But it guides all of your practice and your thoughts. But I don't know how to induce it in anybody. I think the Shakti Pak most people feel when they're exposed to Shakti Pak is not the brilliant burning that it has to be in order to transfix you into transcending. The experience may be too small to totally transform your life. And you have to accumulate multiple experiences. But I still think that this is the best goal to follow. The awakening of a sense of love inside yourself to turn towards others and also to turn towards yourself. To love yourself. But that kind of slow change from doing it as a practice and doing it because it grabs you So you have no choice but to surrender. That yields a different, stronger kind of experience that you could never, ever shake. 
And this is the one I aim for people to get. It's the awakening of to the sight or experience of God within. And you want to throw yourself away for that experience of God within. Loving others, loving animals. But that didn't, it's not the way it happened to me. It came to me as a realization, suddenly, the need to be really deeply in love. And then the, that followed almost immediately. And it was also bringing me back into the world of people. Instead of the world of abstractions or even following emotions, or it was a unifying experience. And I can't tell you how to get that. For every person, it'll be different. I never even considered the possibility before it happened to me. I was busy looking within for a transcendent self. And instead the distraction of love and surrender supplanted all of those practices into single-minded devotion and surrender, surrender of everything to the other, to the universe. And in so doing, finding out that the life is you, the life force is you, consciousness is you. When you throw everything away, and felt the movement of deep love within your heart. Like an incredible force. Like a lightning bolt of unimaginable intensity of love. And after that, you waken up to your own sense of self within. And that purifies you. That takes you to experiences and practices that quicken your awareness inside. And everything begins to be clear. Everything falls into place. When do you learn how to love your own self? Because the self is no longer mundane. The self is that which you've always been looking for, which is to just rest in your own awareness.
then gurus can come to you and talk about all kinds of states, all kinds of samadhis, all kinds of enlightenments, and you won't be moved because you've known yourself. You can feel yourself. You don't know about it like an idea or a concept, but you are it. And at the same time, you love the feeling of being yourself. Ian, where are you? I had um, the state you speak of uh, this morning. Um, I can't say much more. Um, Yeah, so I can't I can't speak of it. Well. May I suggest that Mark just plays some chanting. And continue just to feel yourself relaxing into the chanting. And then just leave when you feel like leaving. But listen to the chanting. You might even look for where you feel it inside yourself. Or you might just relax, and listen to it. Play around with these kinds of things of just relaxing and surrendering. And then sometimes pointed looking at various aspects of yourself or your self self experience. Mark, are you doing it? Yeah, I, I'd like to do it, but I'd also like to make a brief comment if, if you are open to it <clears throat> before I do that. You touched on, first of all, fantastic talk. Every time I think you can't get any more direct, you somehow find a way to very, very to the point. I can't imagine it being any more clear than that. The point I wanted to make is one I've mentioned before. You touched on it. The, 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 the mind is always looking for some kind of transcendental, magical, blissful, otherworldly state. The problem is that when one initially finds oneself and enters into beingness, it's a very weak beingness. And it feels very familiar. 
it, people go, yeah, of course. Who, who, who doesn't feel that? I feel that all the time. It feels very mundane because it's weak. But if, if one has successfully found that weak beingness and one enters into it more and more and it gets stronger and stronger, eventually it becomes that doorway to everything. But in, in the initial state, it throws one off, it throws the mind off because it seems like really a, a, a trivial thing. That's, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> that's true. It does feel very ordinary and you figure out what am I going to find here? I know this feeling so well. But if that thing in you explodes and suddenly becomes like a hundred incandescent suns, whether applied to seeing or to feeling, When you can feel that power unleashed inside of your core, it's utterly transformative. Because you enter the divine world then, because you no longer are in the mundane world. In a sense, you've transcended your former humanity. The ordinary life most live, which is mundane, except for brief periods of happiness in, within the mundane dream. But when the explosion happens inside of yourself, you realize that you're not a human being anymore. Yes, you have a body, but you're not a body. You have emotions, but you're not emotions. You have a mind, but you're definitely not your mind. And instead, Everything that you experience is contained within your beingness. And that beingness is always there, strumming, humming. From then on, you are consciousness, you are this spirit alive within you. And all objects are made of consciousness occurring against a background of consciousness, the field of consciousness. So everything is consciousness, including you and the life force, both acting together. And you worship all other sources of life because they have that same kinness as you do. We're all kin at that level. We're all living sentient beings. And we appreciate the sentience in each other. Okay, Mark, take it away. <laughs> 